All right, welcome back. All right, so today I'm super excited to cover the um, this here clamp meter. It's from TPI, Test Products International, as you can see. Um, it's a pretty slick meter. I'm not going to lie about it. So far, I've uh, done a lot of field testing with it already. This isn't a... I mean, I'm going to show you the box, the packaging, uh, show you everything here, what's included. It's got a um, Bluetooth app you can use with it. Okay, scan that for the free barcode. And uh, these are the specs here. Like I said, you can go through and read all this. To me, one of the better. I love the fact that it's a power meter. I've got a few power meters, which we'll go through here shortly. Um, so we do active power, reactive power, which is really powerful. I'll explain that to you here in the video, and I'll show you why we need to be paying attention to true power when trying to sell our uh, sell customers higher efficiency equipment. We need to know whether or not these blower motors are performing properly. And this meter right here is the meter to show you that. And I'm going to show you exactly here why. We're, we're getting, this thing actually um, does something that I've got about four power meters and none of them, none of them actually are able to uh, accomplish. Well, let's go ahead and get to the packaging. Let's open the sucker up. Okay. So you can understand experience, what you'll be seeing from new if you were to purchase this thing. Like I said, I love the fact that they kind of thought of everything with this. Um, I like this little pouch here. Reason being, one of my biggest pet peeves with pouches is like having to like undo my belt to take it on and off if I want to take it off, you know, while I'm in the field or get in the car. So we got this little Velcro situation where in which I could take that off. I do use this pouch. It is pretty usable. So yeah, got the Velcro, close it up. Let's pop the meter out so we can see what we're working with here. All right, so there we go. So that's the meter. Nice, nice footprint. Nice size. Not too big, as you can see. I'm holding it here. Let me go ahead and get our dimensions on it real quick. Okay, so you can look all this stuff up in the in the website. So as you can see, that sucker's about nine and three quarters. By two and a quarter. Yeah, about two and a quarter is the widest point. By about one and a half. Okay. So that's a pretty respectable size meter. Very usable. Let's go ahead and take a look at our features, right? So we got this set to off. Volts here. That's going to be volts AC. As you can see, immediately we've got, it displays our voltage. And it also displays the hertz up here, our frequency, sorry, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we've got a little automatic power off indicator there. If you want to hit range, you can go through the range on your voltage. Okay, go through each decibel. All right, and we can also do, which I love the feature, this feature on meters is um, the relative feature. So I can take a meet, I can take a measurement Hit relative, take another measurement, it'll show the differential or the, yeah, the, basically the differential between the two measurements. Okay, so we've got, once again, um, continuity, which is the beat, ohms, resistance, and um, the diode tester. Capacitance, there's our frequency. That's duty cycle up here and all that. Temperature, that's cool. One thing cool about it is if you hit function, it'll go back and forth between Celsius and Fahrenheit, as you can see, which is powerful. Give you that microamps. That's going to be amps, AC or DC. Hit the function to choose, AC, DC. And my favorite, watts. Power factor, we've got function. We're going to see volt amps, which is going to be our apparent power, right? And then we've got Volt amps reactive. That's our reactive power. So we'll 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 demonstrate how that works here shortly. Okay. Um. So what else? What comes in the bag? Right. We've got some pretty cool leads. Pretty cool uh, leads here. Now I will say, um. You know, I love the meter. I'm gonna go ahead and say this to to the gang over at uh, TPI. 
this is a pr this is a premium meter this is a premium product go ahead and add some premium leads because hvac guys and electricians man they, they kind of get devious with it about these leads so if you don't have silicone they're going to pretty much judge you off of the off of these leads not being silicone and they're going to pretty much write the meter off even though it's a quality meter if the meters not if the leads aren't showing that same quality then you know you, you're going to take a pretty big hit in this industry all right no big deal though um they've got caps here that screw off there's your little tips there and then you also got um oh yeah k type thermocouple with an adapter to fit it in here so that'll fit in you want your positive to match to your red positive terminal and then your negative so i'll demonstrate that here shortly so that's the standard k-type so it'll fit both that's nice i thought thought that through and we've got two alligator clamps which this is a really nice high quality silicone uh, exterior as you can see rubber so they slide on you know as as you would as you would think they slide on but they actually screw on and it's a nice quality like it feels really solid the lead feels really solid when you lock that in you know a lot of leads kind of twist with you but these leads are very very stout very stout oh yeah another thing i love about it absolutely love about this meter we forgot that most obvious thing i know you're all wondering what's this what's this ncv well ncv is non-contact voltage and the thing that to me sets us apart from any meter i've ever used i've never seen a meter that actually that gives you the non-contact voltage as its own proprietary button meaning i don't have to turn this on i don't have to turn it to any dial find try to find which one is non-contact scroll through it usually when you're using non-contact you're quickly trying to check a, a circuit you're quickly trying to see okay do i have voltage boom put it away i don't need to be trying to go through this you know through all these little uh um options and selections so i'll demonstrate that here real quick so i'm gonna go ahead and do and grab my rig this is my rig that i use for testing the field piece versus the redfish meter field piece sc680 versus the redfish idm 550 i believe it is so but yeah so let me show you something non-contact so we're gonna do and I love the sensitivity of it. Like, that thing is screaming too. But you see the LED light? As it gets closer, that thing starts to pulse and zoop. It's powerful. I love that. Well, the thing about this button though, you see how the meter's not even on. And I'm still able to use a non contact. The thing about it, you do have to hold the button. Which it probably would have been cooler if it was like those little pen style where you just push it, hold it down for two seconds or whatever, and that cuts it on. But that's it's still slick. It's still my favorite, by far favorite non-contact voltage testing feature on any meter I've ever used. But yeah, all once right. again, let's do some field testing real quick, all right? Okay, so now I'm going to quickly demonstrate how we check power on an uh, air handler. This is going to be a Goodman heat pump air handler combo. And I'm going to check, show you how to use check power with the TPI 287 clamp meter. Now, what separates this clamp meter from most meters on the market that are probably under $500 is this meter is going to read way down in the amp range. It's going to read frequencies down to around uh, 0.25 amps. I've done a lot of bench testing. I've done um, in the field testing on induced draft motors. And I've been able to read frequency through the clamps at around, uh, you know, a third of an amp, which is insane. If you think about the field piece meter and the test meter, you're gonna need about seven amps at 120 volts, probably about three and a half amps at 240 volts to be able to read frequency through the clamps. So this meter is reading way lower than the field piece, any other uh, you know, kind of budget power meter out there. You know, you got the more expensive fluke stuff that's probably you know, $2,500 uh, for a power meter. But as far as this meter here, um, comparable to the field piece, uh, testo even the redfish the redfish will read down really low that's what i love about the redfish redfish is comparable as far as getting down into a lower um 
amp draws, and still being able to read power factor and uh, calculate wattage. Now, the reason why I notate that is because you want to be able to know true power, the true power that the blower motor is pulling. If your blower motor is an ECM motor, variable speed motor, you might be seeing a power factor between 0.6 and 0.8, okay? So, you can't just multiply volt time amps. You've got to multiply volts times amps times power factor. If I just vol did volt time, volts times amps, I would think that my power is a lot higher on an um, ECM motor. I'm showing you this to show you how, why it's important to be able to read true power on a multimeter. Now this here is a PSC motor. Another really powerful feature um, or reason why we use power factor is to be able to do a non-invasive kind of uh, rough guesstimation of what our capacitor is, read, is um, reading, whether our capacitor is weak or not. And I'll show you here in a second. So a power factor below 0.95 is usually gonna indicate a weak capacitor above 0.95 0.95 and above, your capacitor is usually going to be pretty strong. That, that phase shift is going to be where it should be in order to have a, a nice strong current voltage alignment. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to open up this door here. Okay, so you can see we're uh, in the air handler here now. And you see the blower, this blower fan relay, you got the red tap coming off of our contactor there. The black and the green are going to be parked. M1 and M2 are parks. So I'm gonna trace that down, and we're seeing the red tap there. Let's go ahead and get our amp clamp. Amp clamp wrapped around, we got our amp clamp wrapped around the red tap, red wire, and we're gonna check our current. Put the meter to current, amps, AC, and as you can see, 0.69 amps. But take a look, 0.69 amps, so what do you notice, oh, 0.71? our frequency is showing 60 hertz. So now, I'm just gonna take our, two leads here, and we're gonna use, I'm just gonna go right off here, off of the, the high voltage part, portion of the transformer, and I'm just gonna tap one on there. The one on the other side. So as you can see, we got one on one side, one on one side, one on the other side. Now we want to make sure our leads can, are still in the air handler, are still fitted in there. So make sure you keep the leads in the air handler. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and open up the app. So they've got an app here, TPI view. Click that. No engineer details. Tap to scan. But first we want to make sure our Bluetooth is on. So we're going to activate the Bluetooth by holding the inrush button. Now it's scanning. Look how quickly that pops up. There it is. TPI 287. Okay. There it is. Point two, point, um, 0.72 amps. 60 hertz. So we know we can do wattage. Put the meter in watts. Now take a look at that. 0.96, almost 0.97 power factor. As I said, if your power factor is above 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you know the capacitor is more than likely healthy. Okay, so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. We've got 153 watts. Now watch this. Put the blower on, put the door back on. And the wattage went down pretty by about 10 watts, okay? Because that's because the blower is not moving as much air. It's not working as hard because it's got less airflow, less air density to move at this point. Now an ECM motor on the other hand is gonna do the opposite. When you put the door back on on an ECM motor, it's gonna ramp up and the amps are gonna actually go up. So that's interesting, okay? And let's just demonstrate that with the amp, with the current. So what I'm gonna do is go to funk, I'm gonna go to live clamp meter we can see our trending graph here right got the meter in amps and now we're looking at 0.72 again and now we're going to just illustrate how it trends upward when we put the door back on
I'm mean, sorry, trends downward. It's a PSC motor. So 0 0.67, 0 0.66. So almost about one one hundred, about five one hundredths of an amp that has gone down. You can see the trending here. But yeah, that pretty much concludes how to correctly check power and amp draw on a blower motor um, for a heat pump. And like I said, you're going to need a meter that could that could do frequency through the clamps or through the probes at well below, you know, an amp an amp essentially two amps because these air handlers especially the more higher efficiency these things are getting unless your duct work is completely undersized and that ecm motor is ramped up where in an unnatural way these ecm motors are pulling super low current even compressors are starting to pull you know really low current um compared to the capacity so we want to be able to know true power of these systems not just volts times amps not volt amps just a quick video Check out the link in the description. You definitely uh, get 10% off. This meter is going for about $299 right now. 10% off if you use the code technology, but that's spelled T E C H K N O W L E D G Y. Technology. All right, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.